it's Chris. As you may know, I've covered a ton of useful iPad apps over the years. Like, here's me from the original unbelievably useful iPad apps video from three years ago. But hopefully over the years, you found some really useful apps that have upgraded your iPad experience. But today I wanna not just revisit, but also rank my favorite iPad apps of all time. And just before we get into it, let me just say, if you're new around here, be sure to check out my other iPad related content, like five ways to earn six figures with an iPad. There's the most useful iPad tips video ever. And then there's videos like how to level up your iPad notes. And final note before we get into it, at the end of the video, I'm gonna be listing some honorable mentions, stuff that didn't make my top 10. So by the end of this video, you're gonna get a lot of great apps. All right, so what we're gonna do is go in reverse order. So we're gonna start with number 10, work our way towards number one, and at number 10, it is Jarvis, the AI writing assistant, which I talk about all the time, because number one, it prevents writer's block. Number two, it can help you write up to five times faster. Now, I put it here at number 10, instead of like number two, where I really feel like it belongs, because they don't have a proper iPad app yet. It's still a web app, however, I'd probably use it on my iPad more than anywhere else. Now, personally, it still blows my mind that I can ask Jarvis for an outline of 10 bullet points on the history of coffee or any subject, and the AI will just spit that out plagiarism free. Or it has all these templates that can do things like write an original creative story for me on demand. It does so much, there's no way I'm gonna come close to covering all of it today. I'm just gonna reiterate that the way I like to use it is to write down whatever I'm doing and then sharpen that writing. So number one, I can have it rephrase something for me or simplify something that I've written so that maybe a fifth grader would comprehend it. I can do those with just the tap of a button. But you know, if I'm writing something and I get stuck and it's like, I'm not sure what comes next, I can just hit Command J and it will spit out a few lines for me. And then I can tweak those however I want and maybe the juices start flowing again. Now, there's a lot of great writing apps for the iPad, but those are basically just containers for you to write in. Jarvis, on the other hand, uses GPT-3 to create with you or to help you be more creative. It's Honestly, just amazing. All right, sitting in the number nine spot here is an app called Endless Paper. You might remember it, but I'm also gonna glue on to number nine here, Stretch Paper. That's right, two apps are gonna be sharing number nine here. Let me explain why. I love Endless Paper as a concept. My mind was literally blown when I originally found this app since it literally lets you zoom in and zoom out basically forever while still being able to make notes. But it's got some flaws. It's not perfect. For instance, there's just the one canvas or document, however you wanna phrase it, that you can work on. So if you're working on multiple projects, then you need to zoom into different sections of the canvas to categorize those, to keep them separate. So stretch paper is kind of a cool alternative. It's the same basic concept, but it does things just a little bit differently. And I wanted to throw it out there just so you have a different option. Personally though, I really like the endless paper interface. It's my favorite out of all the apps that have come out that kind of copied it. So while it's not perfect, I don't use it for all my notes, just for certain things. And that's the one I'm gonna keep using. All right, my number eight app on the list is called Agenda. It's a date focused note taking app. So the unique selling proposition here is that it puts all your notes on a timeline so you can keep track of past, present, and future notes in a really distinct, useful, cool way. You can also put something, quote, on the agenda, which gives it a special status within the app for ultra fast access. So it's just really great for time management and productivity. What I really like, even though it's been forever, it seems like, since I originally covered this, is how unique it remains. So Notion came out and Craft kind of copied it and so did some other apps. And then Rome Research came out and Obsidian and some other apps copied that. But nobody's copied Agenda. It remains its own unique thing. I know a lot of people are super into Bear, but I don't know, there's something about this interface that I really like. Speaking of unique apps, I've got Task Heat sitting at my number seven spot. And honestly, it probably should rank even higher just because of its really out of the box kind of approach to productivity. So Taskkey bills itself as a personal task manager for determined people that turns your ideas into a master plan. Cue the pinky and the brain music. What's brilliant here though, is instead of just having a regular old to-do list app, like maybe things, as good as things is, as cool as that is, here your to-do items turn into a flow chart so you know exactly which actions to take to get things done. There's no other app out there that does things like this. I love the interface and it's great that it has things like tags, notifications, you can collaborate, and it's just a one-time payment. 
no annoying subscription fees. Just a quick reminder before we get any further, if you're liking the vibe of this video, this is a great time to hit subscribe because there's always great iPad content just around the corner here at Daily Tech. Go ahead, I'll wait. There we go, all right. And number six on my list is the perennial favorite, Procreate. Now, outside of Apple Notes or maybe Good Notes or built-in system functions that use the Apple Pencil like Scribble, Procreate is basically the reason why I even have an Apple Pencil, much less a paper-like screen protector. Those two things in combination with this app, it all just adds up to just like one of my favorite experiences in the whole Apple ecosystem. So personally, when I think about creating digital art, nothing, nothing else comes close for me. The brushes are just awesome and the feature list just keeps growing. I mean, you can animate within the app now, you couldn't do that at first. You can even 3D paint objects with the recent update, which is so cool. But Procreate has really become my go-to place to sketch things out. I'm very visual, so if I'm working on something, that's where I go to sketch. Apple Notes, for instance, is great for handwriting, for handwritten notes. But Procreate, that's for sketching, that's for art. Still, right? Nothing's knocked Procreate off the podium in my personal life all these years later. In the number five spot is an app called Ferrite Pro, which admittedly is not the prettiest app on this list, but it is the best audio recording experience for the iPad that I've ever encountered. Now, my main use for using Ferrite Pro is for podcasting with the iPad Pro. And I think I've shared about this setup before, but I love using the Rode NT Mini with USB-C cable, with the iPad Pro, with Ferrite Pro, and the quality is just outstanding. Now it's not as good as this XLR mic here, hooking into a cloud lifter, then hooking into my camera, but still, if I'm portable, if I'm on the road, you know, for simplicity, this is just insane. At number four, I've got the Reader app, that's R-E-E-D-E-R. -E -E and again, this isn't the coolest looking app, it's not the most groundbreaking app on the list, but it is one that I rely on all the time. And the reason it's here is just for the pure utility. And I take that back actually, for what it is, it's very well designed. So Reader is an RSS app, and yes, RSS feeds are super old now, but outside of Twitter, this is one of the best ways for me to stay up to date on certain topics that I'm really interested in. And really at the moment, I only have two topics set up here. Number one, an Apple category, you know why, and number two, a crypto category. Now, if you've been paying attention here on the channel, then you probably caught wind of the fact that I've got a new project in development that's gonna be launching soon, and it's crypto-focused, Web3-focused, going to be breaking that down, talking about my exploits in the crypto world, the things I'm interested in. And if you wanna be one of the first people to be notified when that launches, I'll leave a sign up link down in the description for you. But the way I use Reader is in conjunction with Feedbin, and that just provides an amazing experience. It's a great way to consume information on any of my iPads. MindNote is another classic that I've mentioned pretty frequently, and it ranks number three here on this list because for starters, it's so easy to use when it comes to just organizing ideas, but it also works everywhere. It works on my iPad, my iPhone, my Mac, and yeah, even on my Apple. Apple Watch. So before I get serious about writing something in an app like Jarvis, I often start with MindNode because it's just so simple with the drag and drop interface to wrap my mind around whatever the subject is and then just to rearrange stuff and see how it all fits together. So just this visual brainstorming aspect has been one of the cornerstones of my own productivity and workflow over all these years. And actually it can do a whole lot more than what I use it for. I don't use the tags or the tasks or the stickers or the notes, at least not very often, but I do do love the quick entry feature, which is great for getting stuff out of your head at lightning speed. And of course, the export feature is all important for me because then I can take whatever I create here and get started in the next app down the chain. All right, we're getting down to it. And number two here is the Muse app. Now, Muse, what I like about it, aside from actually using it, I like the concept. The developers focused on the iPad. It's not like Muse is on the Mac and on the web and you know it just happens to have an iPad version. No, it's very iPad specific. There's an iPhone app, but you can't do much with it. It's only for loading ideas into Muse for you to interact with later on the iPad app. Now, I love the way Muse builds itself. It's a spatial canvas for your research notes, for reading, sketching, screenshots, and bookmarks. And in all my arsenal of apps, I found that I typically tend to use this for things that are like one-off 
projects rather than things I'm gonna get in and reference all the time. For instance, when I was redesigning the home office, I used Muse and I dropped in all kinds of different ideas for like furniture and art. And then I could write on all of that because you can ink on anything that you can drop in, whether it's a map or a photo or anything else. And it was just a great place to pull everything together and see how it all looked. And what I love about it is that it doesn't put any constraints on how you work. So you don't have to use it like a wiki for instance, or a sketchbook. It's just whatever you want it to be or need it to be. And I actually think you're doing a disservice to yourself if you don't go to Muse's website and check out their handbook section because Muse does so much more. You can interact with it in crazy ways, fun interface, but it just takes a little bit of research to understand how to make it all come together. And once you invest a little bit of time in learning, the app gets I don't know, 10, 20 times more useful. All right, that brings us to spot number one. Any guesses for those that didn't cheat and look down in the description? My number one app is maybe my favorite app on any platform ever, and it's my mind. When I first covered my mind, it was so new. It was still in beta. There was an iPhone app and a web app if you wanted to use it on the iPad, which did work. I did use that. So my mind is a notes app and the way I use it is as a storage facility. It's the place where I put everything that I don't want to forget. And while you can actually take notes here, there's a really nice text editor. I think what makes it amazing is the insanely powerful search. So without tagging stuff, when you add it, you can search things like pictures by the colors that are inside. And whether you save an image or an article or a tweet or anything else, everything that you save is automatically tagged by the AI with key phrases. So you don't have to bog down thinking about how do I organize this? What should I tag this as? All you have to do is type in a keyword, a search phrase, and it's gonna show up. So there's no folders, there's no collections, no hierarchy really, and there's also no social features, no collaboration, no vanity metrics, no social pressure, no tracking, no ads, and it's always private. If that sounds really great, the trade-off is that you gotta pay for it, right? This isn't ad supported. And for me, that's been well, well, worth it. But now it's time to get to the honorable mentions. Honorable mention number one, Command Browser, which is a browser designed to make sense of the internet. So it has built-in highlighting, journaling, and collections. Also making the honorable mentions list is Dumarks, which is a to-do app for your bookmarks so that you don't save stuff only, but you actually revisit those cool sites that you find. Our third honorable mention is Magnetic, which is probably the coolest and most intuitive to-do app for the iPad because it's so interactive with all the drag and drop functionality. Plus, it's super colorful. Honorable mention number four is Obsidian. And as I mentioned earlier, it's kind of like a Rome research for your iPad. It's really fast. All your notes get linked together in a super powerful knowledge graph. It's just perfect for power users. And then finally, yes, I am including Danger Notes, the app that makes you write for a set period of time, whether it's three minutes or five minutes, whatever you set. And if you stop writing early ahead of the set time, it erases everything that you wrote so far. Hence, it's dangerous. Now this seemed to give people a lot of anxiety, but look, you know, if you know you need to get some writing done, but you also know you're gonna be really distracted, there's just certain times when this is gonna come in handy. I'm keeping it on the list. All right, this is a great video. I think for people who have been riding with the channel for a while, you've been a subscribed, it was kind of like a trip down memory lane. And then for new people, you found a whole lot of great new stuff that's gonna bring new life to your iPad but please leave me a comment with your top 10 iPad apps of all time, because I'm really excited to see what you guys picked. It doesn't have to be stuff that I featured on the channel before. In fact, I'd love to discover some new stuff as well. I'm also gonna link all kinds of iPad content up down in the description. I'll leave you a link where you can sign up for early access for my new project. If you really wanna get into crypto, this is a great time. But other than that, I'm gonna go off and enjoy this cold brew coffee, get this thing edited, and I'll catch up with you guys in the next video. Later.